What is going on guys welcome back in today's video i'm going to show you how to set up a linux virtual machine on windows so let us get right into it all right so for this video we're going to install ubuntu on a virtual machine on windows and this is going to be a very fundamental video so if you already know how to set up virtual machines you're not going to need that tutorial uh, but since in my experience it is very important to have multiple platforms at your disposal and not everyone has multiple laptops or multiple computers it is important to have a virtual machine with Linux on Windows or with Windows on Linux because certain pieces of software uh, only run on Linux, certain pieces of software only run on Windows. And of course, it's best uh, to have the best of both worlds. Now, virtualization with Mac is a little bit more complicated, so we're not going to talk about that. But today we're going to set up the Ubuntu um, virtual machine. And for that, we're first going to navigate to virtualbox.org slash wiki slash downloads, or you just go to Google and type virtual box. Um, so if you go to virtualbox.org, you just press, uh, you just click on downloads here. And then you just pick Windows hosts or whatever distribution you're on, you can also uh, download the Linux distributions, or you can just use a package manager, then you install it, the installation process is not complicated at all. And what you next need to do is you need to get some Linux distribution. Now, in the case of Windows, you would have to use a CD or some ISO file for Microsoft. When it comes to Linux, you can just type Ubuntu, or you can just type Linux Mint, or you can just type Fedora, whatever you want. Uh, and you can go to the website and download the Linux distribution. As I said, we're going to use Ubuntu in this episode because, uh, or in this video, in this tutorial, because Ubuntu is, in my opinion, the best uh, Linux distribution for someone who's starting with Linux. Now, if you have Linux experience already, if you know uh, different package managers, desktop environments, you're comfortable using the terminal and so on, you can choose your own Linux because uh, you know what's good, you know what's bad. Uh, maybe you want to do Arch Linux and uh, craft your own operating system. But I think for beginners, Ubuntu is probably the best uh, Linux distribution because you don't have to worry about too many things manually. A lot of things are done for you and you still have that Linux world with a terminal and with a more, um, with a different way of doing things, let's put it that way. So if you go to ubuntu.com, you go to download and you can choose the LTS version, which is long-term support, or you can choose the most recent version. Uh, now, the good thing about the long-term support is that it is going to be supported, I think, for five years. So even if um, if new versions are released, you're going to have the support for this version. So bugs are going to be fixed, you're going to have patches and so on. Whereas if you pick the most recent version, in this case 2104, you're going to have new features, but you're not going to have a long-term support. So you, you might have to upgrade your system once a new version is out there. Um, so I picked the 2004 LTS. So we're going to close that. You just have to download it. You, you, you click that button and then you get the download dialog uh, for the ISO file, which is what you need. I'm not going to download it now. Um, and once we have all that, we have the ISO file and we have VirtualBox installed. What we do is we start VirtualBox. VirtualBox. Okay, I cannot find it. Um, because I think I didn't add it to the start menu when I installed it. So I'm going to look for it here. Uh, virtual box, where is it? Or is it Oracle? There you go, virtual box. And virtual box exa. There you go. So you start the program. In your case, if you check the box, you're going to have a start menu entry. And what you do now is you click on new in order to create a new virtual machine. So here we say name of the virtual machine is going to be Ubuntu LTS or Ubuntu 2004 LTS, for example, uh, you can also name this my Linux machine, this is just a name, you don't have to specify the version here. Down here, you have to specify the type of operating system. So BSD, Linux, Windows, Mac, and so on. And then the version, in this case, Ubuntu 64 bit. Uh, and then we're going to click next. And here you can specify how much RAM you want to give to the virtual machine. Now, if you have in like, like I have in this case, 16 gigabytes of RAM, you can uh, be quite liberal and give like four, four gigabytes is fine. 
If you have more limited resources, I would recommend at least one gigabyte, two gigabytes, depending on how much you have. You can see that the green field here is fine, so anything in here is okay. If you go to the red areas, it's going to be limiting your host system, so it's not going to be necessarily good for performance. So I'm going to pick four gigabytes here, I'm going to go to next, and we're going to create a virtual hard disk right now. We click on create. We're going to choose a virtual box disk image. We're going to go to next. And now you can choose to have a fixed sized or a dynamically allocated uh, storage. So fixed size basically means you say, okay, 25 gigs or 50 gigs, we're going to reserve for that, um, for that virtual box uh, distribution. Or you can say dynamically allocated, you say, okay, up to 15 gig uh, 50 gigabytes, but you're going to allocate it over time. So when you need it, you're going to allocate it. Uh, I'm going to pick dynamically allocated and we're going to say uh, 25 gigabytes in this case, or maybe 30. Let me just see how much I have on my system. Not too much. I'm going to go with 25 gigabytes. Create. And now we have to also uh, link to the to the actual ISO file. So we go to settings. And besides uh, just the installation, you can also set up some other things, for example, video memory, you can increase the video memory that you provide for the system to, for example, 64 megabytes, you can also choose a monitor account. Um, you can do all sorts of settings, what we need to do is we need to go to storage, and we need to go to the IDE controller, and we need to press this um, adds optical drive, oh, actually not, uh, where was it? There you go. No, we have this empty optical drive here. And what we do is we press this. And we say choose a disk file. Um, or is this actually Yeah, this is a disk file, go to the desktop and we pick the ISO file. So basically what we did now, um, on a virtual level is we inserted a CD uh, into the computer. And now we have everything set up and we just need to start the system. So now we just have to click on start. And when the machine starts, we're going to have to go through the installation process. Now, first, we're going to be even able to try Ubuntu if we want to, but I think for a virtual box, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Now, if you try it on an actual machine, um, it might make sense. But in this case, you can just install it. So here, we're going to click on start. And it's going to start the virtual machine. I hope that the recordings are not going to start lagging because of that. Um, but shouldn't be, it, it shouldn't be the case. So if I open the task manager, the performance shouldn't be too bad. We have enough RAM, CPU, and GPU power, that's fine. So we do all sorts of disk checks here. Most of the installation is basically just a customization. So you're going to be able to choose a username, you're going to be able to choose a computer name, a password, a location, keyboard layout, and so on. I'm going to guide you through all of that. Um, and then once the system is installed, we're going to skip, of course, the, the loading part, the installation part. And once the system is actually running, uh, I'm just going to show you the basic features. So where's the terminal? Where's that for those of you who don't know anything about Linux. Uh, but besides that, you then have uh, a Linux operating system that you can just use. And uh, that's, that's awesome. So now the checks are finished, it's loading, we're going to skip that part. So I'm going to see you in a second. All right, so once everything is checked and loaded, we can see this dialog here that asks if you want to try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu, we're not going to try it, we're going to immediately install it, you can choose the language here to the left, uh, I'm going to choose English, and we're going to go with install Ubuntu. So now we're going to be able to choose a bunch of different uh, settings, we're going to uh, choose the keyboard layout. In my case, uh, it's German, Austrian, uh, so I could just pick it or I could detect the keyboard layout. So I could just press this and it would say, okay, press one of the following keys. So I'm going to press N, then press one of the following keys W, press one of the following keys Z. Uh, is this key present? Yes. And now press this key. No, there you go. And it's going to say it's a German keyboard. Right, so we can just pick that we can continue. And now what apps would you like to install to start with? Yeah, we can do a normal installation unless you really want to have just the minimal stuff. But if you want to have an office suite, a media player, a web browser, and so on, you can just go with normal installation. 
We're going to download updates while installing Ubuntu. And I personally also like to include third party software for graphics and Wi Fi hardware and so on. You don't have to do this if you if you only believe in actual uh, free software. But I usually do that. So just continue. And then by the way, we can also uh, already use the system as you can see here. So even though the screen is not really, really big, because we don't have the drivers yet, uh, we can actually already play around a little bit with the windows here and with sound and so on. There you go. So now we can choose an installation type, we can erase the disk and install Ubuntu, or we can do manual partitioning. Uh, if you're watching this video, you probably are not a Linux expert or a partitioning expert. So I would not recommend the second option. And since we're operating in a virtual box environment, erasing the disk does not mean that it's going to affect anything in the host system. It's just erasing the allocated space and installing Ubuntu. So we're going to click install now. And then we should be able to choose the username and so on. First of all, we need to agree with that continue. And now we can choose the location. So where are you in my case, Vienna, now continue, then the username so we can choose something like neural nine neural box is the computer name neural nine the username. Oh, actually, this is the name. So we can do it like that. Choose a password. Uh, I'm just going to pick some password here. There you go require my password to log in continue just some basic settings here. And now it's installing everything. So I don't think that we now have to do any more settings. I think we now just need to wait for the installation. So we're going to see, uh, I'm, I'm going to come back to you once the installation is done. So once the installation is complete, we see a window like that. And we need to click on restart now. And then we're going to start the virtual machine again, and we're going to be able to use the Ubuntu operating system. So here it says remove the installation medium and then press enter. We don't need to remove anything because this is a virtual machine. We just press enter and then it's going to restart and we're going to enter the operating system. Now what we're going to have to do now is we're going to have to insert the guest editions uh, or what was the name? Uh, do we have it here in insert guest edition CD image? Uh, this is going to be necessary if we want to use uh, for example, multiple monitors or the perfect resolution, some things don't work without those guest editions. So those are things that we need to install on the Ubuntu system, uh, because of the fact that we're virtualizing it. So this is what it looks like when the system is booted, we click on the username and we log in with the password that we have chosen. And then we're going to start setting up the system. Now I don't think we're going to be able to already have the proper screen size. Because I think we're going to need the guest editions for that. And we're going to take care of that in a second. So we're not going to connect any online accounts, we're going to skip that we're going to go to next, 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 done. And now we're going to try to change the display size the display res resolution. Do we have a setting for that displays? There you go. It's lagging a little bit because I'm recording. If you have a powerful system, it's not going to lag. So you don't need to worry about that. Uh, and we're going to go for let's try this one here. Let's see if it works. Uh, let's revert to settings. And let's go with with that for now. Keep changes, there you go. So it's not perfect, but we're going to to now start with the guest edition. So we're going to go to devices, insert guest edition CD image, uh, which is basically just inserting a CD in a virtual uh, way, as you can see, it popped up here it contains software intended to be automatically started, would you like to run it? Yes, we run it. And then it's going to install all the necessary things. So we need to authenticate here. It's installing everything in a command line. 
and then we should be able to restart and choose a better resolution or whatever you want to do. I'm not going to do that now, but basically uh, you install the guest editions and then the virtual uh, box setup is done. And then I'm going to just show you a little bit uh, where the terminal is, where the settings are, and then you can play around with your system because this is not a Linux tutorial. This is a virtual box tutorial. What do we have here? The system is uh, currently not set up to build kernel modules. Please install the GCC make Perl packages from your distribution. Okay, this is just some uh, basic stuff here. What do we have here? Install uh, updates. We're going to ignore that for now. Remind me later. You can take care of all that later on. Press return to close this window running kernel modules will not be replaced until the system is restarted. So yeah, you should restart the system. Uh, I'm not going to do that here in this video. Um, what I'm going to show you is how you open up the terminal, you just go up there and you say terminal. And this is probably the first thing that you should learn about Linux, how to use the terminal, you now have the terminal here. And uh, basic commands like LS or CD desktop and so on. Uh, you should get familiar with that. And if you want to install software, you just say sudo apt install, and then whatever you want to install, for example, Chromium for the Chromium browser, or uh, Discord should be available, or uh, also, no, I'm not sure if PyCharm is available, but code is VS Code and so on, and then you just need to authenticate. So this is how you set up Ubuntu, Linux Ubuntu in a virtual box. All right, so that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.